Hey everybody. In today's video, I am going to show you all the wonders of the Picket Fence Studios life-changing brushes. And they are life-changing. I'm sure you'll agree with me by the end of the video. Now I have the On the Cloud of Dreams stamp set here that I've stamped onto masking paper and just cut the clouds out. And I'm using these amazing brushes. I got these a few weeks ago and they're so soft that I just want to pet them. I don't even want to do ink blending. I just love the way they feel. They're designed to be ergonomic and very easy to grasp, even if you have very small hands. They are not makeup quality. They are made for crafting specifically and ink blending. But this set of brushes that they sell includes all these fun shapes, and I'm going to show you what you can do with those and why it's good to have more than one shape. Now, I just stamped this stamp on masking paper. I didn't also stamp on my card base, so I just stamped them and cut them out so that I can get the negative outline of each of these shapes. These brushes are cruelty free. They're plastic, so don't get them near your heat gun. And you can use them with any ink that isn't solvent based. So I'm using dye inks from Gina K today. And you can use distress ink, distress oxides, pigment ink. Just stay away from the solvents, permanent type inks like stays on, etc. Now I'm just showing you how smooth you can get the ink on my mat before I start blending. I pick up ink with the brush and I always start with the lightest so that if you're working within a single color family, you're not contaminating your light ink pads. I always just get a little bit of ink off on my scrap paper before I start blending. That helps you not get a little spot of ink down right away. This sea glass ink is the lightest color that I'm using today and it is so beautiful. So I'm just rubbing the brush back and forth and then getting a little bit off on my mat and then blending a soft sky of blue on these clouds. The softness of the brushes too makes it really awesome to use with masking paper because they're not so hard that they lift up the edge of that masking paper and make you mess up your little clouds, which is a good thing. And you'll see I don't even clean my brush. In between, by the time you're done blending, you've gotten most of the ink off the brush anyway. And since I'm moving to a darker ink pad, I'm not going to contaminate that ink pad and it's fine to just keep going. But I will have some cleaning tips for you at the end if not cleaning things makes you anxious because I know that that is how some people feel. I like my stuff kind of well loved and so I'm fine with it. But I do have an awesome way to clean these to give you peace with a nice clean brush. Now, after the blue raspberry ink, I'm moving to this gorgeous purple. I love this. I always love to put a little bit of purple in my skies. I think it adds some drama to the blue. And once I've put this last color of ink down, I'm going to go back and blend where the two meet with the previous color, that's also a good way to do it. But look at how smooth this coverage is. This is truly amazing. And it's such a natural motion to have the brush be flat when you are holding the handle, as opposed to a pointed brush that you have to angle onto your cardstock. So for me, it's just easier not to get fatigued. It's easier to hold and it's easier to make good contact with the paper the entire time that you're blending. So now I'll pick up, even though I had purple on there, it's okay, you can see it's still just blue ink. I will grab a little more blue raspberry and once I go over that line, you can see how seamlessly that blends. These are fantastic for stencils. The brush is so compact. There's so many little bristles packed into that brush head that you get great coverage with stencils and they don't tend to slip underneath the stencil the way that some blending tools can. 
I'll do the same thing with the lighter ink, blend out the line between the blue raspberry and the sea glass. These colors just make me so happy. I love them. And look how evenly that goes down. So now here's the most fun part of any ink blending session, removing the masks. I've been on a little bit of a masking kick lately and I'm really enjoying it. I tend to kind of work in phases of products that I'm using, especially when I don't clean off my desk in between <laughs> projects and then that's what I use for my next project. But I've always really enjoyed masking. I love how clean masked images look. And especially for these clouds, it's really dramatic. But we are not done with these clouds because these brushes allow you to do effects that you can't necessarily do with other blending tools. So here's the piece of paper that I cut the masks out of. You can see I just stamped it in a light yellow ink. And I'm going to take one of these skinny brushes and I'm going to make my clouds look much more realistic with a little bit of Gina K gray ink. I love this ink. The various shapes make ink blending so much more interesting. I'm using this thinner oval brush because I want to really get a lot of ink down at the bottom of each cloud. And it gives it so much more character than it had without the little gray shadow. You can see how much more realistic it looks, even though that's kind of a bright blended sky. To me, it gives it like a Truman Show look. I hope that makes sense. Very perfect and bright and happy with dimensional clouds that have just a little bit of gray on the bottom. If you actually look at real clouds, you know, I think we all started just making little white puffy clouds when we were doing art as kids. But they actually have quite a few colors in them. And the gray can be made up of kind of complex colors too. I'm just doing gray here today. But it would be fun to put a little bit of that blue and even some of the purple around the bottom of the clouds because they frequently pick up that reflected light. And that's just a beautiful look. What's cool about this stamp set is, well, it's a background stamp. It's not a stamp set. But what's really nice about it is the clouds are unique. So none of the shapes are repeated. And it's very easy to make an interesting sky where there's not a lot of repetition and sameness in the clouds. So I thought that that would be fun to use as a mask. It's also super duper cute, just stamped. I love these big background stamps. And you can see if I had been really ambitious, I could have cut out every single cloud, <laughs> but I didn't. So now this is sort of like a little puzzle figuring out because at one point I cut my masking paper in half. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out where each little cloud was that I cut out. I probably could have done that a little bit more efficiently, but these are things you don't think about when you're just trying to cut your clouds out. And you can see the contrast between the ones that I do have the gray shadow on and the ones that I don't is pretty evident. And they look so much more flat than the ones that I've added shading to. Now these brushes are available at Picket Fence Studios right now. You may have seen some other projects with them. I had another video with these stamps. And I've seen some beautiful things from the Picket Fence design team as well. So this last little cloud, I'll add a tiny bit of that gray shadow to the bottom. And there you have it. Four ink colors, a bunch of really beautiful brushes, and you have a nice background. Now this is the brush cleaner that I like. This is a brush cleaner that is safe for natural bristles as well as the plastic very fine bristles in these brushes. 
and you get a little cake of this soap and then you just spray it. This is a brush egg cleaner. You just slip that onto your fingers and just rub your brush on the wet soap and then scrub it across these little grooves in the brush egg and then just go rinse it with water. You can also just use mild soap and water at the sink to clean your brushes or you can just brush them off on scratch paper and you don't have to clean them at all. Totally up to you. Thanks so much for watching.